Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning friends, we have been talking about TYW thrust loading and W by S wing loading. We have developed the background understanding. Today quickly we will summarize because it is important to understand there are many conflicting requirements. Let us say for wing loading you will find wing loading requirements are different for different mission. Then how to choose which wing loading I should give wettage. So I thought today in 25-30 minutes we will just summarize and let me write what we have done for wing loading takeoff after having the understanding that when I am talking about wing loading, takeoff, in takeoff the most important thing is how fast I achieve the V lift off or takeoff speed that gets connected to V stall and when I say how fast it means acceleration that again connects it to T by W. All these things we have seen, then we also try to understand how to use statistical data based on some correlations, some model, data driven model and in that connection we found W by S takeoff, initially from, for conceptual stage I can use this formulation. for a propeller driven let's say IC engine backup and then W by S take off this is take off we call to take off parameter into sigma into C L take off T by W for jet driven You could easily see the connection of W by S and T by W. Similarly, we will talk, we have discussed about W by S landing and when I talk about W by S landing, we understand that when the airplane takes off it has a full fuel, when it is coming for landing, the fuel will be consumed some percentage of fuel will be consumed depending upon what sort of mission it has got. So the weight will change, the wing area remains same. So W by S landing will be different for many aircraft which are supposed to drop external stores. So W by S reduces because primarily because the weight has reduced because we have ejected out or dropped some stores. For W by S landing, we approach it like this that we followed let us say one regulation based on FAR 25 which roughly says okay you take 3455 VA square and VA in this regulation has been taken as 1.3 times V stall. So in VS during landing configuration it is 2 W land landing by rho naught into sigma into C L max to S to the power half sigma is nothing but rho by rho naught density 
at the altitude where you are landing and rho naught is sea level density. And using this we have shown that W by S land is equal to 0 0.8563 rho naught sigma C L max into S land. So, it clearly tells you what is the density of air ratio at the altitude where you are going to land, what is the C L max value and what is the length within which you want to make the aircraft stop. right? So, this is W by S landing, this is W by S takeoff and after that we also have discussed about cruise, where we have seen W by S cruise or for cruise mission W by S is equal to Q infinity under root pi aspect ratio E C D naught this is for a range maximum and of course, we are writing for a propeller driven aircraft. So, this is W by cruise when you want to maximize the range for a propeller driven airplane and if you want to calculate W by S, I need to know what is the value of Q infinity and please understand here this expression was derived assuming C L is equal to under root C D naught by K because we were, we were maximizing range for maximizing range for a propeller driven airplane C L by C D is to be maximum which tells me C L equal to C D naught by K. So, if you are really flying with the C L that means, at that cruise lift should be equal to weight that means, half rho V square S C L should be equal to weight. So, V should be equal to 2 W by S by rho C L and the C L is 2 W by S of course, C L is under root C D naught by K. The message is once I am trying to fly at a C L C D naught by K, then if you want to maintain lift equal to weight for a given S and given weight, then V is also fixed, right? And generally you find the V will come a little lower, but the operator may require for a pre specified V. Theoretically, you can have that pre specified V by flying at different different altitude rho, but practical limitation is these altitudes are fixed by designers when they tell please fly at this altitude where engine will be most efficient or an air traffic controller will tell this is the altitude is available for you. So, this sort of a conflict or decision making point comes. Also think you are trying to conceptualizing a design and you want to know what is a W by S I should keep to maintain the range best range. At this stage you have fairly good idea about what is aspect ratio you are looking for maybe 7 to 8 or 9. You have already done a preliminary estimation. E it is better to take E as 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 or 0 0.7 
and typically CD naught initially what should I take for most of the existing airplane you will find order is 0 0.02 in this 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 5 around this but if you are looking into high performance civil airplane maybe your Dreamliner Boeing series so they have attempted of this sort of a number 6 2 the important understanding is if you reduce CD naught right then the CL required CL required for L by D max also goes down see this expression for a given aspect ratio right? if CL requirement goes down that means for the given air, uh, aerofoil you are flying at a lower angle of attack if CL has reduced that means you can fly at a different different higher speeds for the same altitude right so that's the way you try to satisfy both the speed as well as the range requirement right so the whole design exercise goes on here how to reduce CD naught it's one of the advantages right same time you will see that if you go on reducing CD naught theoretically the fugoid mode may get unnecessarily more excited we'll just keep on your notebook underline it we'll come back when you were talking about stability and handling requirements designed for such airplanes so message is yes if I ask you a question you, if you are having this expression at a conceptual stage whether you can get some value of W by S for a cruise for range maximum for a propeller driven airplane can I have some idea or not the question comes if I want to get W by S I, I need to know what is the dynamic pressure so I need to know the altitude and what speed I am going to fly and then aspect ratio of these values you can take it is generally preferred that you see your baseline aircraft or the mission requirement for which you are designing a conceptual aircraft look for another aircraft which is closer to that and pick their speed cruise speed and try to iterate around that okay and put that speed and see what is the CL required here go back here and see for that CL what CD naught and K is required all this iteration will go back and forth right similarly for jet W by S for cruise this we have derived and that comes to Q infinity to CD naught pi aspect ratio E by 3 typically when you are talking about jet you would expect the speed will be higher right and when I do this jet driven aircraft I am looking for a cruise best cruise I know that here CL be equal to under root CD naught by 3k you can cross check from the earlier notes so again the story is same you pick a CD naught based on the historical data again it will be around 0 0.02 around that aspect ratio may be 6 or 7 E I will always recommend you start between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 and Q infinity is what altitude typically for a larger airplane if it is a jet driven engine the recommender the engine recommender will recommend you fly in tropopause 
where the temperature remains almost constant, the specific thrust specific fuel consumption is most efficient. So, if you have that altitude, then you know how to use this expression. Again, you have to take the help of some historical data to look for what sort of velocity the operator is looking for, whether it is feasible or not. Right? Another important thing comes when you are trying to look for loiter. But please understand when we are designing a transport airplane, we give more weightage to the range rather than loiter. So, indirectly, I am telling you the wing loading will get more weightage during selection based on the range requirement, right. So, for loiter, we have seen for jet W by S equal to Q by aspect ratio E C D naught and for the propeller W by S equal to Q infinity to 3 pi aspect ratio E C D naught. Same argument goes how to select Q infinity or C D naught, but if you are designing a transport airplane you, you know that between W by S requirement for loiter and W by S requirement for cruise, I will definitely give more weightage to W by S requirement for cruise because that is the main purpose of the airplane. However, if I am designing some surveillance reconnaissance aircraft, I may give W by S loiter more importance than the range requirement, right. So, these things goes on changing based on what is the final aim. Another thing we talked about instantaneous turn rate, where we have shown, we know that of course, this psi dot is g by v under root n square minus 1, where n equal to q c l by w by s. So, depending upon what sort of instantaneous turn rate you require, at what dynamic pressure, because v will be related to turn rate for a different load factor, all this gets clubbed, because you understand n is l by w. So, depending upon what is the n, at what speed you are looking for, you can have psi dot and once you have n and dynamic pressure and C L, then you know what is the wing loading using this equation. To get C L, you know that L equal to n w, so from there you can find out C L. This is more important for fighter airplane mostly in a dog fight mode, fighter mode and we have realized that during instantaneous turn rate, the drag will increase. So, it is there is a possibility, why possibility instantaneous turn rate when you do you go maximum turn rate, but you lose the altitude right. That may not be advantageous for your dog fight mode. So, we talked about sustained turn rate. And there we showed that W by S for a sustained turn rate is Q infinity by N under root pi aspect ratio E C D naught. There is a word of caution that W by S for sustained turn rate may appear to be very, very low. But one good point we got irrespective of whatever wing loading is required for sustained turn rate T by W should satisfy this condition. This is important. And you can understand in takeoff, in climb, 
and its sustained turn rate, it is indeed T by W will play important role. So when I select T by W, I will give this as a right segment based on which I should look for T by W. Why I am saying climb? You know that for climb T minus W minus or T minus drag minus W sine gamma will be equal to 0 if it is going for a steady climb and this is sine gamma plus 1 by roughly L by D. So, T by W requirement is dictated by what is the flight path angle or climb angle you are planning to climb and 1 by roughly L by D. So, for climb meeting climb performance, I will give more weightage to T by W, right. And for this, I will give more to the W by S. I thought I must also add something on balance field length. You know what is the balance field length? The requirement is very simple. If I have a multi engine airplane, let us say two engines are there and it starts taking off from here and this is close by it one engine fails. Then the answer is obvious if at very early stage if it fails then I can apply brake because I have got sufficient length to hold the airplane. And let us say this is the wheel lift off and somewhere here it is failing. So now one engine is operative, one engine is not operative. But the question is, if it fell very close to we lift off, it is possible that I may not have sufficient length available to apply brake. Instead, I should ensure that even after one engine has failed, I should be able to do a prescribed rate of climb that may not be as high as rate of climb with, with the two engine, but fairly good enough a rate, a rate of climb and then go for a circuit and then again land back, right. So, then the question is what is that speed at which if the engine fails I should either apply brake or I continue take off with a lower rate of climb go for a circuit and come back. The question is what is that speed. So, to address this question the regulation wise there is something called balance field length has been define. So, you see I have written here field length required for safety in the event of one engine failure at the worst possible time. What is the worst possible time? Worst possible time if it is failing early it is not a worst possible time. In near we lift off it is failing that is the worst possible time right. So, that is called that is worst possible time in a multi engine aircraft. So, this balance field length or this philosophy is relevant for aircraft having more than one engine right. And this discussion we talked about decision speed and let me write that these are very very strict definition is approved by the regulatory body. So, I write decision speed the speed at which the distance to stop after one engine failure. exactly equals the distance to continue the takeoff on the remaining engine. is 
the decision speed. So what is the decision speed? The speed at which the distance to stop after one engine failure exactly equal the distance to continue takeoff on the remaining engine. Right? Okay. If I can identify what is the decision speed, then what I will do as a pilot, if the engine has failed below the decision speed, I will apply the brake. If it is more than the decision speed, I should be able to take off. Right? Clear? So, based on that, this balance field length is defined as is the length required to take off and clear the specified obstacle when one engine fails exactly at decision and speed. Right? Balance field length is the length required to take off and clear a specified obstacle that is 50 feet or 35 feet with one engine operative exactly at decision speed. So, this is the balance field length definition. If you see my earlier lecture where we have given those parameter correlation uh, given per propeller airplane and also have given how to get a balance field length from those uh, chart. Right? However, my advice always would be because safety has a non-linear requirement. Right? So, it is better you take data from similar type of aircraft to an engine aircraft, what sort of balance field length is prescribed in their manual, get more and more such data and take a decision at a conceptual stage. Thank you.